All right, Kevin. So now that we've had the opportunity to review the incident, get more perspectives, hear from you around just like how that looked to you as a parent and to Amanda as a student, um, we're going to shift to talking a little bit more about her as a, um, as a student with a disability, um, her disability, her needs, and then we'll talk about her, her IEP, um, again, through the lens of, is this all related to her disability? So I'm going to start with Mr. Van Oss to talk a little bit more about her disability itself. Um, he's bringing that expertise to the table. So he's going to share perspectives on that first before we talk to IEP. Okay. And Kevin, I know this is a little bit of a review, but just for the, you know, the team's benefit, because we did have her evaluation last year in fifth grade um, and talked about this at that time, but she um, is eligible for special education under that category of other health disabilities. And part of the reason why is because she does have that diagnosis of, of ADHD and it's the inattentive type. And I think last year when we did the evaluation, we kind of saw what you would expect from that diagnosis, kind of that that daydreaming in class sometimes mm -hmm. and the you know teacher kind of cold calling like Amanda and, and it'll turn her head and not have heard kind of what was what the question was. Mm -hmm. um, asking for repeats of instructions that the teachers maybe said to the class several times. Mm -hmm. um, so those those inattentive um, being on task and kind of engaged with with the instruction, I think are the major needs we see um, from that behavior perspective. Um, and that the IP, and I think you're going to speak more to yeah. the goals, is kind of around that yeah. primarily. Yeah. Yeah. And when we looked at, you know, her, you know, the documentation from the physician that diagnosed her as well, again, the needs that we saw in there were very much largely related to just inattention, being off task, t trouble following multi-step directions, things like that. So that is what we're working on in her IEP. Uh, right now, Amanda's goal is around staying on task, um, you know, staying focused on the work that she's doing. And I did want to just share with you briefly, um, I had brought some information around her progress um, on her goal. So you can see that when it comes to her IEP goal itself, she's actually doing quite well um, and making some progress in that area. The supports that we have in place, um, you know, th thinking specifically of math class where this incident occurred, uh, she has um, her self-monitor where she's, you know, trying to check for staying on task through her watch, which has been a helpful tool for her. That watch minder thing. Yep, yep. yep. Um, she has her uh, tasks broken down. She's getting her written instructions. And then I see her daily for, for her service to, you know, help build those skills so that she is better able to stay on task. Um, and we had actually, you know, had that service earlier in the day prior to math and and she had done well in that service. So, you know, I just, I think reviewing that those are the, the biggest things from her IEP. Um, am I missing anything, team, in terms of that or any questions about her IEP, Kevin, from you? Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Because her, her behavior pattern has really been around that inattention. Yep. So this incident was pretty different from that pattern. We've yeah, seen. yeah, we really haven't seen this kind of behavior for her before at school. Um, so with that, we're going to go back to those questions that we had talked about at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, and to try to figure out again, like, was this caused by her disability, this incident? And um, so that is the first question is, is the if the conduct in question was caused by or had a direct uh, and substantial relationship to the student's disability. And like Mr. Van Oss just said, and, and what we've talked about is ADHD inattentive type is, you know, these types of behaviors are not consistent with, with that type of a diagnosis. Um, so the, the district at this point would, would say no to that, um, to that question that it, it's not caused by or substantially related to her disability. Um, any questions or thoughts on, on that or? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the second question was, um, if the conduct in question was the direct result of the school's failure to implement the IEP. So that day of the incident, you know, she received her special ed service. Like I said, in that morning, um, her teacher had implemented her accommodations. We had checked with her on that, um, in terms of just as we followed up and she had that, that tool, that mm -hmm. self-monitoring tool that she on her watch, like all of those things that she has in her IEP were in place that day. 
So as her case manager, I don't see anything that we didn't do. Um, anything, any other perspectives there? Okay. Yeah, it just, it's not a manifestation of her disability at this point. And so unfortunately, we as a district, we've got to keep ourselves safe and we will be pursuing further discipline, um, exclu including expulsion. And so just due to the severity of the incident, so I'll be getting you some more information on that and how we can proceed. So what does this mean for Amanda? So Kevin, like uh, Ms. Matson explained, she's going to share a little bit more information with you about what expulsion means, what that process looks like. Uh, in the meantime, we, we do continue to serve her. So I will continue and we're going to talk about this next, like what that instruction will look like while she remains out of school during this process. Um, and so that's number one. Um, Number two, I think it's just important to circle back to those parent rights that I had shared with you at the beginning of the meeting. So the district has to make this determination, but you as the parent, you have the right to disagree with that, that determination. Um, you know, we've, we've had great conversation here. I know this has been hard. This is a really hard subject um, and situation. But uh, Mr. Van Oss is going to give you some paperwork before you leave here, that form he's been completing as we've been meeting. And at the bottom of that form, it talks to you about your rights as a parent. And if you disagree, you can request what's called an expedited due process hearing. And there are some phone numbers on that form for you to call. And then also, again, here in this section, there's a whole part about how you do that. So just I want you to be equipped with the, this information. Thank okay. You. Yeah. You're welcome.